it's sounding like Snell is going to New York. Um, we really don't know, but uh, Boris apparently countered to the Yankees offer recently. Who knows if they'll be able to come to agreement. But if that does happen, I don't think it looks too good for my O's in the uh, American League East there. That'll just give the, the Yankees an absolutely stacked rotation. And this is one of the few teams we've heard Snell mentioned with. So I'd just assume at this point it's the Yankees. Let's shift over to the Baltimore or- or- Orioles. Obviously, some injuries to the pitching staff. Um, you never want to see that this early in the season. They were probably the most fun team for me to watch uh, during the year last year. So I want to see them kind of take that you know, next step. But do you see them making a move for another pitcher? You know, possibly could they, they be in the race for like Montgomery or somebody who's still out there? Or do they just go through the season with what they have and maybe try and, you know, pick up another arm at the deadline? Like, how do you see them dealing with the injuries that, that they've seen so far? It's tough. They do have some depth in the rotation. Tyler Wells is one of their best starting pitchers last year, for the, at least for the first half. And they had him plan to pitch in the bullpen. He'll be back in the rotation. I assume that the prices will be even more, even higher at the deadline. So I'm not really sure um, what their plan is. But it's it's pretty. I don't want to say it's rare, but it's you know with Snell and Montgomery out there, they could make another splash. I, I don't see them doing that. My guess is they you know internally either Cole Irvin is going to be the five and Tyler Wells at the four at this point, which doesn't give me that much confidence going into the year because like you said they're such a great young fun team i had a great time watching them last year the most fun i've had watching the orioles and i can't remember since when um but it's a little disappointing to have those injuries especially right at this point um i don't see them going out and spending you know another 100 million or whatever it's going to take to sign snell and montgomery We've seen the we've seen the extremes. We've seen the Dodgers one hundred three and a half over at BetMGM. We've seen the A's at the bottom at fifty six and a half. The Orioles won a hundred games last year. They started at ninety and a half. Do these injuries going to affect? You know, am I? I still think that's a pretty good number for them at ninety and a half. It is. Um, I think I might even saw something around eighty nine uh, over the weekend. The thing about it is, this is a market that I would potentially maybe even wait for an in-season number on. But after looking at the schedule, the Orioles have one of the softest April schedules in the league. They do end the end April with, I think, three or four against the Yankees. But other than that, that might be only one of two teams, I think, that are above 500 that they're facing. So I don't hate, uh, you know, over 89 at, at this point or even a bet on the Orioles division, thinking that it, the number will be, you know, won't be as there won't be as much value there at the end of April. But it's nothing that I'm running rushing out to bet, to be honest. These uniforms, obviously Nike and Fanatics have joined and they're creating the uniforms this year. And by God, they're awful. They, 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 they look are, they like are, something they? you get like on a back alley somewhere, right? I mean, are, are yep. you, have, have you seen these things? Like as a Dodger fan, the the first thing I notice is that they look smaller. They look like they're a size too small on these guys. And like the red number for the Dodgers is is smaller. The, their names are smaller. Uh, I I can see Scott Boris getting mad, and saying, "What? Why is my guy's name smaller? They, what's up with the cheap uniforms?" This is where I am a traditionalist, and I don't like change. Like I like uniforms. I like yeah, white home uniform, gray road uniform, very basic. You want to throw in an alternate there? Okay, we can do that, right? But I I don't like that there's seventeen thousand uniforms out there, and these ones for the Phillies. I don't know if you saw them, Jim. They're terrible. They look like a Gatorade bottle. Like it's like <laughs> blue and it's got yellow and lightning, like. We're red, white, and blue. Like, this is Philadelphia, brotherly love, liberty, right? Like, there's no yellow and blue. Like, it just, it looks awful. But if you look at these uniforms, there's a hundred shades of blue, and it's the the letters are kind of like a lightning bolt. That has nothing to do with us. Like, it has nothing to do with Philadelphia. And they put a little Liberty Bell on the side. Like, we're going to get that in there, right? You know, we, we have to get that in there. But it looks, I, you turn on the TV, you're like, who are these guys? Yeah, that's not what you want. You want brand recognition. You want to be able to flip the channel, know who's playing, right? You know, by looking at the teams. But to me, it just, it ruins their identity. It kind of like wrongly associates their identity. Like, I don't I don't like it at all. I think I'm a very classic uniform guy. You can, Like I said, you can throw in the throwback. That's a lot of fun. Love that the Phillies bring back the Powder Blues. One of my favorite jerseys, right? Doesn't that have to be home white, you know, gray road. You know, I, I I understand that. I can do that. But these uniforms, it's like a bad all-star game. Like, it's like, you know, it's just, it, they're just brutal. 
minus 500 to win the Central. Their win total, 53 and a half, which is interesting because they're sitting at 36. What say you about the Cavs? I like the Cavs regular season. I, you know, I think they, you know, they're going to win this division. Um, I, I think they'll continue doing what they've done. Bickerstaff's done a great job with them. They have the players, Donovan Mitchell. The, the key issue last year with this Cavs team was you, you hit the nail on the head. They limped into the playoffs, but also, you know, mentally they weren't ready for playoff basketball. They admitted that the lights were too bright. You know, they, 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 they getting that experience should help them a little bit this year. Um, so they're a team that I see, like, we'll probably see a lot of what we saw in the second half out of them, uh, you know, what we saw in the first half. I think they're going to be a good regular season uh, team, much like, you know, Utah was with Donovan Mitchell. But then when we get to the playoffs, I don't know if we should have a lot of expectations for this team. I know we're looking for somebody besides Boston, right, because Boston just has the best roster in the East. And everybody's wondering, well, where can I get value on the odds boards outside of Boston, right? Boston, you know, I think plus 115 right now to win the East. So you, at this time of the year, we want to find futures that have a little bit more meat on the bone, right? But I just don't know if Cleveland's a team that we should be targeting. Yes, you know, the, will the experience help them from last year? Absolutely. Maybe they'll win a round. Maybe they'll win two rounds. But they're not going to come out of the East. So I think that's just too much of a jump in one season, but I love what Bickerstaff's doing. I love what they're building. I think Donovan Mitchell has, you know, really flourished there, you know, with this team, he's got some younger players around them. It's going to be a little bit more of a slow build there. Uh, but I, I think this is a, this year is going to be a step in the right direction, but as far as targeting them, like in the futures market to win the East, I don't like, I think it's too much. You know, I could play them in the first round, depending on what the matchups are. That's going to be a key. But that's really how I see Cleveland. Uh, how about you, Jim? Are you like somebody who's buying that like they can take a big leap? I know a lot of people are looking at Cleveland or looking at New York as teams that might be able to really threaten Boston, but I'm not so sure. Yeah, I, I drank that Kool-Aid last year with the Cavs. So maybe I'm just a bitter Cavs <laughs> better. Uh, you know, they're eight to one to win the East uh, over at Bet MGM. Right now, they'd be set up for a 2-7 kind of matchup. So maybe a Miami, maybe an Orlando, maybe an Indiana. That's kind of what their window projects. Listen, they remind me a lot of kind of like the Dolphins were in the NFL. They beat bad mm -hmm. teams and they lose against good teams. And and normally that's that's a 500 record in, in you know in the NBA in, in sports because you know you you only see how many good teams there are. So again, I think being a team that beats bad teams and loses to good teams doesn't bode well for long-term existence in the postseason. So mm -hmm. I would fade Cleveland. I think they're close. I think maybe a year from now, uh, they will mm -hmm. be more of a contender. And listen, not to take anything away, they are second in the Eastern Conference. They're, you know, But I'm not sure that they're going to be able to hold off the Bucks. And I wanted to transition over to the Bucks, second in the division. And I get it that the division's aren't a priority for a lot of these teams. It's it's sort of like somebody's got to win the central. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? But it really doesn't really matter as, as much as it is where you are in the East. Milwaukee third right now in the East. I think what gave us all pause, Mark, is that they fire their coach. In comes Doc Rivers, red flag number one. And they lose seven out of 10 with Doc. Now they brought him in for defense, because their defense is atrocious. They're second in the league in points per game at 122, so they score a lot. They give up a lot. The defense seems to have gotten better in a 10-game window, but you lose 7 out of 10, and Doc Rivers, who has a propensity to, to spit the bit, if you will, where do you see the Bucs? you have any faith in them? I don't, and I really wanted to. Like, going into the year, I really – I like the acquisition of Lillard, but losing Holiday hurts them. They, defensively, you, they're not that good, and, and they're getting better. Now, that I think – I want to say they're just outside of the top 10 in defensive rating in February. Very small sample size, right? Level competition is going to, you know, ha have, uh, you know, part of that. So, we'll, we'll see how they finish the month out. Uh, in deep, but still, net rating, they're 15th, like – they're just the way they're constructed is just not good. And and the sacrifices that they made to get Lillard, like I'm not sure that's going to pay off. Yes, it takes some pressure off Giannis, but 
Um, I, I, I don't know. I think that was a step in the wrong direction. I, I think what Boston did, obviously, is, is working out a lot better. I don't have a lot of confidence in Doc Rivers. Like, I'm from Philadelphia, and I don't think everything that happened here was on Doc Rivers. Like, the culture was not good with the Sixers. Probably still isn't good, even with Nick Nurse. Um, and, you know, I thought it was a bad mix. Like, you know, Rivers with his playoff uh, shortcomings, you know, coming into Philadelphia into that situation – I thought that was an odd fit, but here with Milwaukee, like again, having to come in and ultimately like save the season, that's a tough spot. And I just don't know if this team, like the way they're built, if they have enough defense to where when we get to the playoffs and it is a half court game, is it going to matter? Because they're going to play teams that are going to be able to put people on Lillard, you know, and they're going to be able to take him out of the game. So I I don't know. I, I don't like Milwaukee. You know, it, again, are they going to be better, you know, down the stretch here than the, what we've seen the first half? Sure. But is it going to be enough to really do anything and move the needle, do what they brought Doc Rivers in there to do? I don't think so. I, I don't think that's the case at all. I don't I, – I, I think they are what they are at, at this point, and they're not going to be a great defensive team, and I think that's going to hurt them when we get down into the second, third round of the playoffs.